continue with Richard Mags' lesson five, part B. As we continue in the world of inductance. So if you're following along in the textbook, it's section 12.5 and 12.6, mutual inductance and the LR circuit. So what is mutual inductance? Basically, that's when one magnetic field interacts with another inductor, creating a second magnetic coupling, which then induces another voltage. So we call this mutual inductance. Mutual inductance occurs between two nearby coils. In other words, it's got to be so nearby that the magnetic field from one cuts the magnetic field of the other. So when the current starts flowing in one coil, it builds up a magnetic field, and as the magnetic field builds up, it then induces a voltage in the nearby coil. So the moving field induces the voltage in that other coil because of their proximity and the relative movement between the field and the turns of that second inductor. So one of the most common places we use this is with a transformer that has coils and a common core and it works by what we call mutual inductance. So you can see here in this particular diagram we've got a primary winding. We turn that primary winding on and for the few seconds that it takes for current to build up and magnetic field to build up that magnetic field is produced in the core of the transformer and that flux cuts secondary winding and you'll see the node will swing over only for a split second only while the magnetic field is actually changing. So it works well for transformers on AC where the current and therefore the magnetic fields are constantly changing you get this great ability to use the magnetic field to transmit energy across the transformer. So a transformer has coils all on a common core and it works by that property we call mutual inductance. The two magnetic fields being directly related to each other. Sorry, the two coils being connected together by the one magnetic field. So let's have a look a bit more closely what is the RL circuit, in other words the inductive and resistive circuit. It's a circuit that has inductance and resistance in it and they're connected in series and they're called the RL circuit. All inducts have some internal resistance. So an inductor itself is its own little microcosm of an RL circuit as its resistance and inductance are effectively connected in series. The resistance of a coil limits the maximum value of the DC current that can flow. So that's the resistance, not the inductance. The inductance opposes changes to the current. There's that Lenz's law, but only while the magnetic field is building up or collapsing again. So here's our basic RL circuit. Again, we're in the world of DC, so it's only going to have a magnetic field as it builds up and as it turns off. So the RL circuit has inductance and resistance in series, where the resistance is often that of the inductor alone. And uh, quite often you will see, um, we will draw dotted lines like this around the inductor and the component to indicate that the resistor is actually an embedded part of the component. And it's the difference between a pure inductor and a practical inductor. So here in this circuit you can see since we turn current on, the only thing really restricting current is the internal resistance of our inductor because once that magnetic field builds up in the first couple of microseconds it has no further effect because once the magnetic field is up running it's not moving anymore it's been established and it stays established therefore it doesn't affect the current 
So after a couple of milliseconds, the only thing restricting the current in this circuit is the only the internal resistance of the wire with which the inductor is made. So what are the effects of inductance? And here we're kind of taking those first couple of milliseconds and kind of spread them out so you can see them. So again, we're just looking at the first couple of milliseconds that a circuit is turned on. And we've graphed it over here on the right hand side. So where the little red box is pointing, it says switch is turned on. So the switch is turned on and the curve all gets up to this one amp, which is the internal resistance, slow current up at one amp, and one time constant is when the current gets to 63%, 63.2% to be exact. And again, that in fractions of a second. This whole thing only takes less than a quarter of a second to happen. But if we were to spread it out, this is what it looks like. The curve slowly grows as time goes on. Get to that point, that's one time constant. A couple of milliseconds later, the magnetic field's been established and it's just going to keep going along at that rate. Okay, now the switch off effect. So we're doing exactly opposite now. We're we're saying, okay, no more current flow, let the magnetic field collapse. But of course, the magnetic field collapses, and of course, a back EMF is induced because as that magnetic field collapses, and that's represented by these arrows pointing in, the magnetic field is collapsing in, so the magnetic field is cutting the inductors, so an EMF is produced, and current flows. And again, it only flows for a couple of milliseconds, but after we've dropped... 63% of our current, we're back to one time constant in the opposite direction. So the back EMF of coil causes a current to continue after the supply is disconnected, making it decay to zero approximately as the a part of the RC circuit. So as the circuit collapses. So the R or the L are time constant. A time constant is a time taken for a current or a voltage to reach 63% of its final value in one direction. And the time constant of an RLC circuit can be found with a nice little formula T, or it's actually lowercase T, it's called tau, is the L divided by the R, the inductance divided by the resistance. So we're T is the time constant, L is the inductance in Henry's, and R is the resistance in ohms. So as long as you know what inductance in Henry's is the R in ohms, you can work out the time constant, and we use that little Greek lowercase t, which is tau. So here's a little example, and again, to see this in a bit more detail, you go to your textbook and look at page 266 to 267. There's a few more examples there. And you can see here we've got 500 inductor in series with 100 ohms and we've got 20 volts. So let's look at the example. So let's look at what we've got. Our L is 5 Henry's, our R is 100 ohms. So our tau or our time constant is L divided by R, 5 divided by 100, so it's 0 0.05 seconds or 50 milliseconds. Very, very quick, very quick indeed. So let's summarize what we've learned in this particular chapter. The voltage E induced in a conductor by a moving magnetic field equals the product of the flux density B multiplied by the length of the conductor I, the velocity and relative movement. So E equals BLV. 
the voltage E induced in coil equals the number of turns multiplied by the rate of change of the magnetic flux. Remember, it's always got to be the rate of change. And this is simply E equals N, the number of turns, multiplied by the change in flux, divided by the change in time. Inductance is the opposition to a change in current, the back EMF. An inductance of what Henry causes an induced voltage of 1 volt when one current is changing at a rate of 1 amp per second. Inductance L of a coil can be found with this equation. This is the third time we've looked at the equation. L inductance equals N squared, the number of turns, multiplied by the area, multiplied by the permeability, and all divided by the length, because that's the only one that's inversely proportional. The interaction between the magnetic field of one coil and an adjacent coil is called mutual inductance, and we'll be doing a little practice to show you how that works and give you a little bit more of an understanding around that. The time constant tau for an RL circuit is the inductance divided by the resistance, or L on R, in seconds. So that again brings us to the end of electromagnetism, lesson 5, part B. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little more around inductance.